Tony D and Little Joan, which screenwriters take on The Machine, starring Burt Kirshner as um, himself and Mark Hamill as his dad. And it was a pretty funny movie. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pineys, books 1 through 13. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So, Bert tells this story in his stand-up. And this is, I don't know how true the story is. I'm sure there's some exaggeration involved. But the basic, basically what happened was, while he was in his 20s, and he shows some in the trailer here, uh, he went to Russia on a on a class trip this is 20 year old bird and uh, it was so full of gangsters that they actually assigned gangsters to protect the class and he got the nickname the machine and here he is in a stand-up telling the story he got the nickname the machine because he wanted to uh, he wanted to say badass in Russia but he mispronounced it and he pronounced it uh, the machine so um, it started a legend of the machine because he would get drunk and party and everybody liked him. And uh, he got so drunk, they ended up robbing the train. So uh, the premise of the movie is that during the robbery, he stole some pocket watch from uh, a guy who wasn't a gangster. But after the watch was stolen, he decided to become the biggest gangster in Russia. So now it's 28 years later or something, and the gangster sees him on TV telling the story because he becomes a famous comedian telling the story and realizes he's the guy who robbed the train and he has his watch. So he tells his children, who are also in the Russian mob, to get his watch back. Um, and so 28 years later, they show up at his house during his daughter's sweet 16 party and kidnap him back to Russia along with his dad who just happens to be there. So here's the, the female uh, Russian gangster who kidnaps him. Drags him back to Russia to find uh, this pocket watch. And there's Mark Hamill having a good time. <laughs> so... Um, now I'm giving a non-spoiler review, so I won't I won't go into the detail of the rest of the plot. But that's the setup. I mean, you get that from the trailer, and uh, so it's pretty funny. The trailer does have most of the funny scenes in it, uh, but they're pretty good, uh, almost worth it. I would say it's uh, above average. Um, the first act uh, moves well. The second act gets a little bogged down in the characterization of some of the um, Russian gangsters. And um, it's not very realistic. So, it, you know, as a guy who studied the organized crime, I was just like, on the one hand, everybody was a little too murderous. But on the other hand, they weren't as murderous as they should have been. And weren't as smart. Now, the characters weren't playing to the height of their intelligence. They were just kind of there to be uh, foils for Bert and his dad. But that all being said, it was fun. It was a fun movie. So I was fine with it. Um, about late in the second act, just before things really kick off in the third act, it gets a little bogged down with this one character named Igor, who they finally find. And the whole movie, they're looking for this watch. Um, but other than that, um, you know, it's pretty good. It, it ends fairly strong. And, uh, you know, it has a, has, a, has a fairly strong climactic scene that's fairly funny. Um, I would give it like, I don't know, if it was like a 1 to 10, I'd give it like a 7.5, something like that, or 8. Somewhere around then. You know. Uh, I think it could have ended a little stronger. But mostly it's fine. Mostly it's fine. Um, so. 
Should you watch it? Well, it's on Netflix now. So if you got Netflix, I got free Netflix right now. Here it is on YouTube. You can rent for, I don't know, what do you rent movies for on YouTube? Like a two ninety nine or something? Uh, doesn't say. But um, it moves fairly well. It's an hour 52, uh, which good. It's under two hours. It's a, that's a little long for a comedy. I would want it to be a little tighter. I think they could have cut down a few of the scenes. Um, the characterization of some of the, you know, explaining who some of the people are was a little tiresome to me, but I tolerated it. It was okay. It was okay. I wasn't super interested in that. I just wanted to see more crazy scenes with Bert, but mostly I was okay with it. Um, so that's about all there is to say. I mean, if you like Bert's stand-up, I'm sure you'll like the movie. Um, Mark Hamill is okay in the role. Um, he gets crazy at the end, which is fun. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it was decent. Decent, I'd say. Um, and they even opened it up for a sequel. I don't think they should do a sequel. Not, not a direct sequel. Like, you could do another movie with Bert and his dad in some other situation. But I wouldn't bring back the Russians to do it again. You know, that would be almost too much. Um, but um, Bert is funny. He's funny as himself, as this, uh, you know, partying guy who went too far. And, uh, you know, I could see maybe a, maybe a TV show, you know, with Bert doing this every week and getting himself into trouble. Um, you know, because unlike some daddy type shows or movies, Bert wasn't stupid because he was dumb. He was, he made a mistake because he drank and took too many drugs. Right? That, that really was the issue with him. But, so... I would want it to be slightly smarter and slightly more realistic. But other than that, I'm okay with it. I And I, I thought I had, I had a reasonably good time watching it. All right, so that's a non-spoiler review. Let's get into the nitty-gritty of why I have some problems. My problems are mostly small. So the first act, like I said, just flies by. You know, they established Bert and, and why he became the machine. And... Uh, you know, they don't show you the flashbacks right away. I thought they were going to start with the um, 90s Bert and then go into the modern day, but that instead you get to hear his story during the course of the movie, and they keep cutting back. Um, that part I liked. And then, uh, of course, he gets him and Mark Hamill get kidnapped. They go to Russia, and they have to find this pocket watch. Um and uh, the uh, female gangster keeps threatening him, which is fine. That's what gangsters do. Um, but then at some point, she confronts her brother uh, in this one scene, somewhere in the second act. And then it's like, oh, well, I'm a woman. I should be able to run the Russian mafia. Um, like, on the one hand, yeah. A lot of women don't run the Russian Mafia. Um, I haven't heard of any. But on the other hand, uh, Russian culture had Catherine the Great. Right? It was Catherine the Great that, that was the Russian, right? So it wouldn't be inconceivable if she was powerful enough. I don't know. It just felt like too much to throw that in there, too. And it didn't really add to the comedy. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see it add more to the comedy. You could have made it add more to the comedy in that, like, Bert and uh, Mark Hamill's character, his dad, were kind of on board with that. I mean, they're not, their politics weren't totally evident in the movie, but there was some, there was sort of a thread of progressivism with Mark Hamill's character because. Had this weird moment where he reveals to Bert that he's uh, nonviolent 
because he, uh, after he watched Mandela, he took a vow of nonviolence for some reason. Um, so it would have been funny had they both been very supportive of um, the female gangster, but she was a total psychopath deep down, which they kind of almost went to, but they didn't quite go there. They kind of humanized her later in the second act. It's the second part of the second act that sort of is just a little too long. I would have cut it down. But so anyhow, the first act, they're kidnapped to Russia and they get there and they're trying to find this watch and they're going through different places where um, Bert went. And along the way, they're confronted by other gangsters who they have to fight. And then there's this amazing scene where Bert ends up shooting three guys at once. <laughs> <laughs> and he's really freaked out about it. It was very funny. Um, that's the best scene in the whole movie, I gotta say. And I, when I saw it on the trail, I laughed my A off. Um, but, um, and in the movie, it was a good tip. Um, I think they should have saved that for the latter half of the movie. They probably could have done that, but anyhow. Then uh, they end up on a train and uh, they're trying to find Igor and they, they find the wrong Igor, which is, unfortunately, they set that up early on and, and so it doesn't come off as that funny. But So it's wrong Igor. Then they're confronted by the female gangster's brother, Alexei, and it's like the brother and sister fighting. And then, of course, Alexei shoots his sister who falls off the train and you know almost immediately when he does it that she'll be back. So um, that was a bit much. I, I thought there was too much to do. And they even have a moment where she could have, she and uh, Bert and his dad are trying to escape Alexi. And they could have just jumped off the train, but they don't. <laughs> and so then there's this other weird scene where Mark Hamill pushes Bert off the train because he tells he tells uh, Alexi that he'll help him find the watch. Now th that, on the one hand I get it, like he was trying to protect his son and then he says, well my son's a moron, I'll find you I'll, I'll find your watch. It's like but he has no chance of finding it. Like none. Uh, there's no way he's going to find the watch. He has no idea where it is. He wasn't on the trip where Bert stole the watch. And Bert did steal it. They established that in the flashback. So it doesn't quite make sense. But, you know, again, in comedies, you can overlook things if it's funny enough. This movie, I think, it's mostly funny. It's mostly funny. I kind of can overlook it, but it, it, it kind of was tough. I was kind of like, what? That doesn't make much sense. Like, why doesn't Alexi just kill him? So then, there's th this is where the movie gets nuts. So Bert wakes up after being thrown off the train, and he's walking around the woods lost. So so earlier in the movie, he, he reacquires this pot brownie from his trip, which was hidden in a wall for like 28 years. And he has no other food, so he eats it. And he gets high as F. And then he has a moment with his 20-year-old self in a hallucination, which, okay, I get it. It's just kind of wacky and stupid, but he has he has a conversation with his 20-year-old self, uh, which, is a li which is kind of fun. And then uh, he wakes up, he's being shot at, and uh, it's the real Igor that he's been looking for, right? And then, of course, Igor, Igor's going to have the watch. And from the moment they introduce Igor, I knew he was going to have the watch. And I knew, eventually, the female gangster would show up injured and they'd patch her up, which she does. And it's like, that whole sequence takes way too long. It just takes way too long because they have to reestablish Igor, what has happened to him since then, what he's been doing. Then they recover uh, the female gangster and they nurse her back to health and they drink and they bond and they finally find the watch. And it just... I don't know. The whole sequence was like... It was like too much baggage. So... Um, then... They go back... To save... Not really to save Mark Hamill, but like... 
if he's even alive, which they do acknowledge in the movie, which I appreciated. Like, he, oh, if he's still alive. Like, they didn't think he... But then, like, you know, Bert didn't seem very worried about him. So, of course, they go back. Oh, and also, Igor has, like, everything... Bert also stole from his own class, and for some reason they resent him, which kind of didn't make sense, because on the one hand, okay, if you robbed your classmates while you were drunk on a train in Russia, at the at some point when the robbery was over and the train ride was over and you were back with the class, you would either tell them, I was so drunk I didn't know what I was doing, I had to rob you because the gangsters threatened to kill me, which seemed pure, pretty realistic. And since he robbed the train, wouldn't he have gotten a cut of it? I think, you know, because they, they, they make Bert's character, the machine, like a legend in Russia. After he left, he becomes legendary. They put his picture on vodka and... They talk about them, and all the gangsters measure themselves <laughs> against the machine. And that was the fun part. Like, I wanted to see a little more of that. Um, and then there's a great scene towards the end in the third act where Alexei reveals that he hates the machine because of that. He hates Bert because of the machine. So, the climactic battle is... Um, uh, the female gangster versus Alexi's guys, and she's just mowing them down one at a time. Uh, while Bert and his father have to fight the gangsters, but Bert has to get drunk, like, you know, he drinks vodka, like Popeye eats spinach, and then it gives him superpowers. And that was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, it's stupid, but it's fun. You know, it makes no sense. They should, they would immediately kill him. Like, there's a whole scene where they're in a casino and. The guys are just machine gunning everywhere and not hitting them. And then, you know, uh, Bert and his dad end up taking out, like, all the gangsters, including this giant guy they call Sponge. And, um, you know, it makes no sense. But because it's a crazy, fun movie, you can kind of forgive it because it's, it's just a fun scene. You know, if you can't forgive it, then it's just not your kind of movie. And then this scene here with Mark Hamill is when they finally find him again and he's been taking drugs and having sex with whores. Here, here they kill a guy and the reaction of Bert and Mark Hamill, whatever the Russians do something gangster is, is fun too because they're always horrified, which they should be. So they keep them as normal guys. Here he is bursting into the wall where he finds a pot brownie and a bunch of other stuff. And during the casino machine gunning scene, uh, they have out their issues. And Bert has a line like, uh, wow, Dad, you're really connecting with me. You should take drugs more often. <laughs> so that's fun. And as I've always said in comedies, it doesn't really matter if the movie's all that logical as long as it's funny. So this movie, to me, is funny enough that it got me through the slower scenes. Um, I think the only thing that would have improved it is um, the female gangster's character arc. I think she needed to be, like, way more uh, psychotic. <laughs> I think she needed to, like, ramp it up to a, a thousand by the end of the movie. Um, because, you know, the final scene with her is she finally kills her dad. After getting the pocket watch, she kills the dad, and then immediately the entire mafia worships her because she kills his dad, which isn't realistic, but you can kind of see it. But, like, she's not a total psychopath like she could be. Like, she needed to be, like, a complete psycho. She kind of is, but, like, her performance doesn't, like, you know, bring that. So, she's okay, but not, she doesn't go that extra mile. And then the uh, resolution is, um, Bert goes home and, uh, you know, reconnects with his family, and now everything's good again. And he's going to go back on the road as a comedian, and he's not, you know, there's going to be a balance between partying Bert and, you know, the the Bert that lives at home. 
and he's not going to get his daughter in trouble again, uh, which I guess is true too. I'm not sure. Um, so, overall, fun movie. Uh, Mark Hamill's fun in it, and um, and his fan the the act actresses who play his family are pretty good too. I don't think it's his real family in the movie. Maybe it is. I, you know what? I, I should check. Um, but they were pretty good. You know, they seem realistic. So if they're if they're his actual family, then uh, I don't think they are. Uh, my guess would be no. Yeah, there's Young Bert. There's Mark Hamill. Um. Lexi, let's see. Yeah, no, these were not his real family members. But, um, you know, I thought they were pretty good. So, um, there was a lot of, like, family issues, which... You know, I get it, it was the motivation of the movie, but I could have done with a little less of it. Um, you know, I could have done with a little less of the family issues. I would have liked to have seen, um, I don't know, a little more, uh, just a little more comedy. Or... Again, like ramp it up to a hundred if you're gonna if you're gonna do the family issues. But um, I, you know, I would see another movie with Bird in it. Yeah, yeah, I would have cut cut it down though. I mean, it was an hour fifty two. I think it needed about ten minutes cut out of it. it would have been a lot tighter. But um, yeah, other than that, yeah, I think it was pretty good. I mean, there were long scenes with. Uh, Irana, that was the name of the female gangsters. Long scenes of her fighting guys. Like, too many, I thought. Or I wanted to see funner scenes where, like, Bert was fighting. Bert fighting was fun, because he's just drunk. And, uh, you know, they kind of almost didn't know what to do with the fights. I think part of the problem with that was the detail of his family life was good, but I think we needed a slightly more detailed with the Russians. Like, if we had had a detailed sort of where they were, it was kind of just like casinos and gangster places, like generic casinos and gangster places. Like if it was their house, right? And we had seen the house in the beginning, and then we go back to it at the end, and we kind of have a bit of a map of it, but not the whole place, but... I think it would have been better. Or if they operated out of a hotel or whatever. Something like that. Um, I'm nitpicking. I'm nitpicking. Um, the uh, screenwriters were Kevin Beigel and Scott Landis. And good job, fellas. Good job. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is, I think, worth saying. Um... I would say it would have needed, you know, again, I give it about a 7.5. I, I would say it just needed a couple of more comedy bits right at the end. Now, they have an after credits thing, which is okay. Um, but um, it needed just a little more, just a little more of a punch up. I don't know what you could have done. Like uh, his dad sells carpets. Maybe you could have done some carpet thing in the movie, like his knowledge of carpets allows them to escape <laughs> or something. Like, son, I remember this carpet. Um, or something like that. Or, um, you know, like at the end they do a commercial with his dad's carpet company. And, uh, uh, you know, there there's... Like, it could have been the thing where, like, they set up early in the movie that his dad always wanted him to do a carpet commercial because he knew it would be good for his business, but Bert didn't want to do it because he thought it was cheap, and he was mad at his dad anyway, so he never did it. 
So when he does do the commercial, there's a little more of an impact. But, um, you know, other than that, eh, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, some of the guys they got for this movie, oh my God. There, there are a lot of, lot of Russian-looking actors in this uh, flick. Who was Sponge? Sponge was a giant. That guy was huge. Um, but, you know, the ending was very sort of, okay, everything's over. <laughs> but again, that's the way comedies end. You know, a lot of times it's like, you've squeezed out all the comedy. The, now the story has run its course. You've already passed the climax. You gotta end it. You're like, it's gotta end quick. Because the longer you're sort of lingering out there without a comedy bit, the longer the audience is going, all right. So, uh, I didn't think it lingered in that respect. It just, you know, it resolved, it said, okay, everything's resolved. That's it. Go home. Um, and that's what you want to do. Uh, unless you have a few good bits. So I could have seen maybe one or two bits, you know, like maybe a cut back to Irina and how she was running the mafia now that she was in charge. Uh, some funny bit there. They did have a funny bit at the end. It, it didn't really hit for me because I wasn't a fan of the show. They, they had this running bit with Family Matters <laughs> and repeating other lines from like 90s and 80s TV shows and stuff. And that, that kind of worked. <laughs> um, you know. But, uh, um, yeah. Uh, overall, I, I think it's worth watching if you like a funny movie. Especially if you're a fan of Burt. So, um, and in terms of screenplay, solid enough. Solid enough. Yeah, not much you could do in terms of, again, like, you could throw more comedy bits in there. Um, like, I would say the slowest parts of the movie are, again, late in the second act, where you you're you're doing you're humanizing Irina, the female gangster, for no reason. Like you're not really getting anything of that. If you're gonna humanize her, it should be so. At the end, you turn her into a, like a super psycho. Like Bert thinks, oh, well she's not so bad, and then it turns out no no she's she's disturbed. Like I think it needed that little extra mile would have been would have been icing on the cake. But as it stands. I'm pretty okay with it. So, it was called The Machine. Uh, it's on Netflix now. Check it out if you like to laugh. And that's it for me, Tony D. And Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. Uh, we will be doing the live stream tomorrow where we go live at 7 p.m. Hope to see you there. We'll see you tomorrow.